So what we're gonna do then now is to, uh, I'm gonna share a video of you, Lance, doing a demo um, uh, on the Microsoft Tunnel solution. So let's install the server. So first what I've done here is I've spun up a Linux VM and you can do this doing either Red Hat or you can do it with Ubuntu. I've done it with Ubuntu. Um, it's basically just a vanilla install and I've opened firewall, a firewall port to allow an inbound connection so that my clients that are external to my network can access this server to get VPN capabilities and access my on-prem network. I have a TLS certificate as well that will secure the connection between the client and the server and I've copied up the server install as well. So let's get this started. So the first thing I'm going to do is run MS Tunnel Setup. And what it's doing is it's pulling down some uh, images from Docker and now it's prompting me for the EULA. So I'm going to accept the EULA when I'm prompted. And now what it's asking me to do is copy over my TLS certificate file, which again is used for uh, securing the connection between the client and the server. So I'm going to exit out for just a second and I'm going to run a quick script that I have to add the certificates to the right location so that the tunnel setup can go find those. And now I'm going to launch the setup again and it'll just pick up where it left off. So now I'm going to continue the installation. So it's now creating the tunnel gateway services, it's installing my certificate, and now it's asking me to log in. So I am going to go to a browser on my Windows PC and complete the login here. So I, it just asked me for the code. So I'm gonna select my account, and now it says I'm signed in. So coming back to the install, it completes the installation and now it's asking me which site I wanna join. So in this case, I'm gonna copy the GUID for my US site because that's the site I want this server to join. So I'll paste that in. So it's joining the that site in Intune now so that it can pull down the right configuration and it completed the installation. So let's take a look at how we set up the Microsoft Tunnel Gateway servers. So first what you're gonna do is go into the endpoint.microsoft.com admin console and you're gonna to go to tenant administration and then there's a new node here that you'll see called Microsoft Tunnel Gateway. If you look at the overview pane, uh, since I don't have any servers installed right now, you'll see some information on how you can get started. So the first thing it'll talk to you about is how you set up server configurations, how you set up sites and servers, health status, and then after that, how you actually get the clients up and running. So first you'll create some VPN profiles uh, for both iOS and Android, and then you'll deploy the tunnel application to the devices. So if we look at server configuration, I'm just gonna create a new one here. And the benefit of having a server configuration as a separate profile is now I can share that with different servers that I install. So instead of having to set up split tunneling rules uh, many times, now I just need to do it one time. So we're gonna call this uh, server config one. And then the IP address range is what IP addresses will get associated with clients as they connect to your tunnel gateway server. And so I'm just gonna put 192.168.0.0 and then uh, create the subnet. And then with DNS servers, I'm just gonna put in uh, the DNS server that I want my clients to use as they connect to the tunnel gateway server. If I have a DNS suffix search that I want added to uh, all my devices, I can add that. So in this case, I'll just add contoso.com. I can add split tunneling rules if I want. Uh, for this example, I'm not going to add it, but I can do include and exclude rules. And then I can also specify the port um, that I want the tunnel gateway server to listen on. So I'm gonna finish creating this policy. And now what I'm gonna do is go to sites and servers. So as we talked about before, a site is kind of a logical grouping of servers. So think of it almost as if you have a, a load balancer in front of a bunch of servers, and this is gonna be kind of the single connection point for your clients. And then your load balancer would parse out that traffic to each individual server that's associated with the site. So I'm gonna create a new site, and I'm gonna call this my London site. For the FQDN, uh, what I'm gonna put is this server. Again, this could be just an uh, you know the, I, um, the FQDN of an individual server. It could also be the IP or, or FQDN of the load balancer. 
For server configuration, I'm gonna pick the server config that we just created. And what this means is that now every server that gets associated with this particular site, the London site, is going to inherit the server config one in all of its settings. So I'm gonna create that. And as you can see, I don't have any servers uh, installed or associated with this site yet because I just barely created it. So to, to install a server, what I'll do is I'll say new server, and then I'll get a link to the download script. And this is the installation, um, the installation script that you run on your Linux server. And we'll show that in a, in a subsequent demo on how you actually get this installed on your Linux box, but this is where you'll actually get the script. And then lastly, there's health status. As you can see, I don't have any servers installed yet, but this is where I would be able to see things like, uh, you know, if, if the device had checked in, if it's online, um, if there's any issues with that server, just to kind of help me be able to troubleshoot and know if I have any issues with those servers. So after I've completed the tunnel installation, if I go back to tenant administration, Microsoft tunnel gateway, you'll see on the overview tab that I just see a health status now that shows me all the different servers that I have installed as well as their health status. Um, I don't see the cards anymore. Now if I go over to sites and servers, now I can see all the servers that I have installed, which site they're associated with as well as which server configuration is associated with that and as well as the last check-in time. If I go to health status, then I can see that I have one server that's offline, it's having some issues, so that's something that I should go check out. Maybe the, the VM that it was on uh, had turned off and I need to go restart that. Um, and I can also see that I have one server that is online as well. So let's just give me a quick overview of the different health metrics that exist and we're gonna add more health metrics over time. So now we're gonna create a tunnel policy for Android Enterprise. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under devices and then we're going to pick Android and then configuration profiles and create a new profile. So we'll pick platform and Android enterprise and then for profile we'll select uh, VPN under the work profile because uh, that's the type of device that we're going to enroll for this particular demo. So we'll give it a name, we'll call it Android Tunnel. And then for connection type we're going to pick Microsoft Tunnel and We'll do base VPN. So for this one, we'll just say Katoso VPN again. And then uh, for the FQDN of our server, we'll paste this in. Now, the next thing is per app VPN. Now you're gonna notice that this is a little bit different than the iOS one um, due to how the architecture is. But in this case, what you'll do is you'll actually browse to the application from within the profile itself. So I'm gonna pick edge. And then I do want this to be an always on VPN. So what this means is that I'm doing a per app VPN but I want it to automatically start up so the end user doesn't have to actually go launch the tunnel application on their device and click connect. It'll just automatically connect when uh, their device boots up, and but it will only send traffic from edge through that tunnel. And additionally, we can have a proxy server if we need it, but in this case, we don't. So we'll click next, and then we're gonna assign this out. So we're gonna say all users and create. And that's it at this point. So now we've deployed uh, our tunnel policy and we can go to, to apps if we want to and just make sure that the uh, edge application is pushed to our devices. And, and uh, you know, here you can see that we've got the manage play store app for edge. And if I look at the properties, we'll see that that's uh, targeted to all users. Now I'll get the app pushed to the users. It'll automatically be associated with uh, the VPN, the per app VPN, and it'll auto launch the tunnel application or the tunnel VPN as well when the user signs into the device. Microsoft Defender for Endpoint combines security and connectivity in a single application. If we look at the dashboard, we can see that there's currently no threats that have been found. App security scans for different malware that may be on my device. Web protection protects me against phishing attacks. And Tunnel shows me connectivity uh, to remote resources that may be on my on-prem network. If I look on app security, I can see that I currently don't have any threats, but I can do a scan if I need to. Web protection shows me that it's enabled and can also tell me more about potential phishing attacks. And then Tunnel shows me that it's currently connected and gives me different information about what endpoint I'm connected to, the uptime, uh, data that's been sent and received, etc. So let's take a look at a couple of these different scenarios in action. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I heard about a really cool application. And so let's go figure out what this is. It's called Test Virus. There's literally nothing suspicious about this. So we're going to install this. And now you can instantly see that I've gotten a notification indicating that there's a threat found on my device. So if I click that, 
Now I see that there's a thread. It takes me right to app, app security and I can see there's a concern. If I actually went and looked at the dashboard, I'd see my device wasn't secure and that app security has detected a malicious app. So let's go take care of this. So if I click on app security and click uninstall, now I have an easy way to mitigate the threat and you can see that my device uh, immediately changes to no action required and that the device is now secure on the dashboard. So let's go look at our email. And as you can see, I've got a really exciting uh, email that's come in saying that I could win an Xbox Series X. Now these are super hard to find, so I wanna actually go uh, take a look at this. All right, so let's click this link and go, go uh, sign up so we can get entered to win. So now when I click that, you can see that I was instantly blocked from, get, from uh, accessing the site because it was a, a potential phishing attack. So I'm gonna say okay, and it no longer takes me to that site. So that's great. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna check out Tunnel. So now I've got some on-prem resource that I need to access. So let's go take a look at how that works. So I'm gonna go type in uh, the address for my on-prem site. And you can see I was instantly able to get connected. So as you can see, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint combines security and connectivity using Microsoft Tunnel into a single application experience for your devices. Thank you.